You've probably heard about hacking computers, emails, and even phones. You've probably even heard about hacking elections. But have you ever heard about hacking your brain? In today's episode, I want to take you inside my brain in an effort to understand my mental state and improve my consciousness, cognitive function, and happiness. How often do you actually think about your brain? I know that's a very sort of meta inception thought, but seriously, you train your muscles to you know, get fit and exercise. You eat healthy not to get fat. But honestly, like, what do you do on a regular basis to sharpen your brain? And even if you wanted to, how do you start doing that? Do you know? Because I certainly don't. I can honestly say that the only information I can remember about brain training and brain functionality was from my third grade teacher, Mrs. Sherwood, who used to say, see if I can remember it, um, a Sudoku a day keeps memory loss at bay. Um, she actually said that. Wait, pauses for a second. Hey, Mr. Sherwood, look at me now. I'm all grown up. I'm a struggling YouTuber. As I say that, please think about subscribing and liking this video. Thank you. Okay, but before we get into it, how about some brain facts? The brain is made up of soft gray and white tissue, containing nerve cells, non-neuronal cells, and small blood vessels. And out of all the animals on Earth, the human brains have the largest number of neurons, which are specialized cells that store and transmit information by electrical and chemical signals. It's 60% water and a load of DHA fat, which explains why water is good for your ability to concentrate. Your brain's full of water. And the average person's brain accounts for 2% of their total body mass. And I weigh 70 kilograms, so that puts my brain weight at about 1.4 kilograms, which actually, funnily enough, is exactly the average man's brain weight. Quick fun brain fact, Albert Einstein's brain only weighed 1.23 kilograms, meaning that his brain was below the average man's brain. But you know, the most interesting fact I found about brains is that even though our brain is only 2% of our body mass, it consumes 25% of all the energy our body intakes every single day. Aha, that is our first hint towards hacking our brain, nutrition. Because going back to my example of exercise, it's been proven in recent years that nutrition is equally as important as the actual training and exercise towards your athletic outcome. And what do your muscles eat? Protein. So for this next part, I'm gonna take you for a walk down to the Time Out Market here in Lisbon. Ciao, ciao, obrigado. <laughs> so our muscles are in a constant process. They've been broken down and built back up again. So in order to grow them, we need to have a net positive muscle protein balance. So I just bought some protein uh, so I can feed my muscles. It's called synthesization. It's basically the muscles eating the protein. But our brains, we can't look at building our brains or growing our brains uh, the same way that we do with our muscles because, I mean, after all, our brains are trapped in our skull. They can't grow they're surrounded by a seven millimeter protective thick layer of bone. Cheers. So our brains, unlike the muscles, are made up of essential fatty acids. And unlike muscles, we can't synthesize those in our brain or our body, so we need to intake those through our food. So I just bought some salmon. Hold on, so we've cracked the code here, a second code, in that to feed our brains, like muscles need protein, our brains need essential fatty acids, or more specifically, DHA. Should I try and say it, Rufus? Here we go, this is a dyslexia trying to pronounce DHA. It is dietary docosahetic. I'll try again. <laughs> dietary docosahetic. Seconoic DHA. It's good for your brain. So basically, DHA is what the adult brain needs in order to function correctly. And actually, the retina and visual cortex have been shown to actually have signs of improvement with extra DHA in the system. So having a sort of a net positive a DHA brain balance uh, is similar to having a net positive muscle protein balance for muscle health and growth. But what other foods have DHA in them? So I think my mother told me blueberries and salmon and things like that are good for the brain. Uh, let's give her a call and see what else. Hello, Hello darling. Um, quick question. Um, I'm at the market, I'm trying to buy food for my brain. So what would you recommend as like the top three things to buy for my brain? Fatty fish, nuts, 
And blueberries. All right, cool. I've got fatty fish. I'll get some nuts and I'll get some blueberries, okay? All right, I'll call you later. Thanks, bye. <laughs> See, moms always have the answer. So my mom said uh, fatty fish, so I've got some of that already, some good fatty salmon. Um, nuts and berries. So I'm gonna run around and grab some nuts and berries. Just after I do that, I'm gonna go get a second opinion because I have a friend based in London who has a startup called Heights, um, which has created a, a brain pill, basically. It's a supplement that includes all the goodies that are great for your brain. So I'm gonna grab some nuts, and I'm gonna head home and have a chat with Dan. All right, so I got my brain food. Let's go talk to Dan. Hey Dan, how's it going mate? <laughs> uh, look Dan, so I'm trying to better understand my brain and I kind of want to hack it or engineer it, set it up for success basically, right? Uh, I thought you'd be a good person to ask because uh, my conclusion so far is I need to focus on nutrition. Uh, but what nutrition? Um, my mum says salmon, nuts and berries. Yeah, yeah, I mean you're spot on. I mean that is a very good brain diet. You're taking the steps to look after yourself for the long term because you believe in caring for yourself. So the perfect diet is the mind diet, which is essentially a Mediterranean diet, which obviously does include those things. Um, and lots of olive oil and yada, yada, yada. But what if you can't eat that all the time? We have a single product at the moment, which is our smart supplement. So what was the logic around creating a smart supplement? If you're not eating fish and you're not having like a lovely big plate of algae, um, every night for dinner and you're not eating a kilo of flaxseed because this is the problem like the vegan and vegetarian movement tell you oh don't worry about that just have flaxseed so you have like a normal amount of flaxseed but you need like a kilo well if I only ate flaxseed every day sure that would be okay but that probably wouldn't help everything else in my body you know we did this research we interviewed 2,000 people and we found that um, only one percent of them on a regular basis ate what would be considered to be a good brain health diet and that gave us some data to say well 99 percent of people don't get anywhere near enough what they're meant to to feed their brain. And I've had the personal experience to say that nutrition made massive cure for me and science is there to back up. All right, so quick recap. In order to grow our muscles, we need to feed them protein and stretch and strain them, exercise them basically to grow, right? And in order to have a healthy brain, we need to feed it fatty acids and a DHA. But what is the equivalent of stretching and exercising our brain? You know, my teacher, Mr. Sherwood, might have also been right that brain training actually works because a study published in 2017 showed that a brain training intervention known as speed of processing training significantly reduces dementia risk. So I'm gonna give brain training a go for the next few weeks and months, actually. So uh, I've downloaded this app called Luminosity, uh, which is one of the leading brain training apps. Uh, I'm gonna pay for the subscription to get the real kind of full benefit of it all. Let me know if you know any good brain training products that are free uh, or that have worked for you. Let us know in the comments, thanks. There is one method which you and I have both heard of um, that is proven to actually increase the gray matter in the hippocampus and the frontal areas of the brain. Do you know what that is? It's meditation. Meditation actually might help your brain's important parts enlarge. And more gray matter can lead to more positive emotions, longer lasting emotional stability, and heightened focus during the day. Meditation has also been shown to diminish age-related effects of gray matter and reduce the decline of our cognitive functioning. So there you go, that's hacking your brain long term. This is of course subjective, but the more we meditate, the less anxiety we feel. And it turns out that this is because we're actually loosening the connections of particular neural pathways. And of course, having the right nutrition, right? You know, like feeding your muscle with protein, you need to feed your brain with the right nutrients. And you can do it in a very active way, like I did uh, going to the market today and buying fatty acids, nuts and berries, and a bunch of nice vegetables. But you can also do it by taking a supplement such as Heights, and there are other supplements out there. Um, all of which will benefit to having a healthier and happier brain. One big one we've forgotten to mention is sleep. It's the simplest, easiest place to start with. We all sleep and not everyone meditates, not everyone cooks, not everyone eats the same things, but we all sleep. So the first simple step towards a happier, healthier brain and therefore happy and healthier you is to start by sleeping correctly. Try and get those eight hours. Actually, there's a really good book called Why We Sleep. I'll link it below, which I'd recommend you to read about the benefits of sleeping correctly and things like that. So start with sleep and then try to blend in the rest uh, as you go. This is a long-term game, so don't expect any quick fixes or quick results. 
just to create positive daily habits and you're into a winner. And no surprises here, I'm not a medical expert, so please do consult your doctor um, or your nutritionist or your mum, because mums tend to know best um, before you go ahead and change your diet or your nutrition or your exercise routines or anything. Um, thank you so much for watching this episode. Uh, we had so much fun making this episode, didn't we, Rufus? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. It was super fun. Um, hey, and please do consider subscribing to our channel because we release these big features occasionally where we deep dive into topic areas. Thank you to Dan and the Heights team for, for being able to add their thought leadership. I'll link them below. Uh, they do regular vlogs. They have a mindful um, podcast as well where they share information about brain care and brain health. Really great resource. And this is by no means sponsored by them. I am genuinely actually just a, an advocate. I'm a, uh, one of their tribe. I, I, I subscribe to their, um, their brain supplement because I genuinely want to optimize myself and my brain care. So um, thanks for watching this one. Please consider subscribing to our channel or just like the video. That's it. See you in the next episode. Ciao. I wonder what would happen if I took 16 a go. Should we give it a go? Yeah. In the next episode.